Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and today I thought I'd come outside and make a video for y'all talking about my latest projects. Um, one of my sons is in the basement shooting zombies and playing video games and hollering. Another one's got a buddy over and they're running around the house. So the quietest place is outside. Now, I actually just recorded half of the video with the AC running, and when the AC stopped, I'm like, wow, it's so much more quiet. So I'm gonna try to get this video made before that AC kicks in. You can hear a little bit the highway because I live off the highway, but all in all, it's very nice out here. Um, so this is what I'm talking about. I made the dishcloths that the Canadian crotcheter mentions in one of her videos, actually labeled dishcloths. They're by Julie Reeves. You can print them off of Ravelry, and it's a three set. And um, one of them's called Granny RR Dishcloth. Another one is Blue Round Ribbon, Ribbon Ripple Dishcloth. And the other is Pineapple Dreams Dishcloth. Um, I'm not gonna go a lot into detail about the pattern because if you would like to learn more about that, please check out the Canadian Crotcheter. She goes into it more. What I wanted to talk about was the different cottons that I use to make these cloths. Um, and that's really where I'm going with this. So the first one I used, Sugar Wheel Yarn Bee from Hobby Lobby. It's $5.99 and let's see here, there are 335 yards and it's 100% cotton. But this is not a stiff cotton, this is a mercerized cotton. So it's very soft, um, it's pinks, dark pink, light pink, and even lighter pink faded into gray. The first one I made, I want to say, was the round Granny RR whatever one. And this is what it looks like. It's very floppy. I don't think, I'm actually ripping it out. I don't want to keep this cotton in the dishcloth. Now, I guess if you're using it for the purpose of cleaning dishes, I suppose anything would work, but to me, it just was too flimsy, too floppy, and I really feel like because it's so soft, I feel like this should be something that you wear. So I'm either gonna turn it into a baby sweater or a shawlette or maybe um, maybe uh, something something anywhere, a cowl, maybe a hat. So um, I started ripping it out and I'm like, wait a minute, I need to take a video. So this is the first one I made and it's not my favorite. Look for future projects that I make with this yarn that I feel like maybe is a little more appropriate. The next one I made, I used the Little Dollop uh, Sunrise Sprinkles. It's $1.99 uh, at Hobby Lobby and it's a yarn bee. And this is a 55% acrylic and a 45% cotton. Oh, and it is a Little Dollop. There's only 92 yards. So this little guy was made, and this is her other one. Uh, oh, here's my Maddie Boo. I um, oh, she's bug catching. Uh, so really, I don't know which one I made. R Blue ribbon round ripple or whatever. Um, and I really liked it. I did not color control with this one. I just center pulled from the the little dollop and went around. Um, the one minor thing that isn't that big of a deal. I don't know if you can see in this video. Right here, there's like a dark fleck in the yarn. Now I don't mind when there's flecks of the other colors, so if in the yellow there's kind of flecks of pink, or in the light peach there's flecks of the yellow or the dark pink, that to me is fine, I, it doesn't bother me. But I am a little annoyed that like right here on this one popcorn, bam, there's a blue spot, which you all probably can't see. Um, but I really liked this yarn, all in all for the dishcloth. I think it looks great, it's nice and stiff. And the other thing is if you wanted to, you could make another one of these, because she gives you the pattern with the flat, side so you don't have to have the three-dimensional flower in the middle. You could make a flat one, sew them together, and then you'd have a trivet or a hot pad. So I do like the stiff cotton. Plus I feel like this is a little bit more durable in regards to wiping down counters, wooden tables, maybe scrubbing something on the floor, the handle of the refrigerator. You moms know what I'm talking about. That handle of the refrigerator is so sticky. So this is the little dollop, and I 100% recommend it for dishcloths. And like I said, this was not color controlled. This I just pulled, started crocheting right away. No. Um, oh, she lost her moth. Um, anyway, so what did I do next? I think I made this one. This is the third one. This is her Pineapple Delight, and I love it. What I really love about this pattern is she has you do a, uh, two stitches together here, which really makes this three-dimensional and pop. 
Um, so I made this with the third type of yarn that I brought out. And I've had this yarn for over a year and it's Karen Cotton Cakes. Karen Cotton Cakes, I bought this at Michael's. It is uh, a level 60% a cotton, 40% acrylic. And um, I can't find the yards on here, but it's big. 100 grams. Oh, here it is, 211 yards. So with this one, because this started to look so beautiful, I started color controlling because I wanted it to be consistent and it's so pretty. And the yarn is nice and stiff too. Um, I, a little floppier, but really not that bad. Um, so I do recommend using the Karen Cot the Cotton Cakes. And you know what else? Both, let me see if I can find a little, I think I used up all of my dollop. This is a rounded, it's, it's more of a round, tightly spun yarn. So um, I made that one. And um, so here's, this is because I'm color controlling. And that means when I start to, just in case you, some of you might not know, when you're color controlling, when you come to an area that's gonna be a new row and you still have a significant left part left of that color and it's not gonna make it all the way around, I cut it there and I, I pull the yarn out until I get to the new color so that it is like I chose these colors to all go perfectly together. So there's no like color changes mid row or mid stitch. Um, and you know what, the reason I like doing that is because I think it makes it look like you planned it to look this beautiful, but I'm not very good at putting colors together. So I like buying these cakes because they're perfectly matched to be together and look nice together. So that was the second one I made. And so this is one of each. This ended up, the little dollops to make these two, ended up using one and a half little dollops, maybe one and three fourths. So you easily could make two, two of these, two dishcloths, one dishcloth per dollop. This one's a little smaller, I think, maybe not. But anyway, that's what I have there. Um, just a little bit less of a dollop to make a dishcloth. So then I made another, I went back to doing this pattern again. This was that first pattern that I made with the other that was floppy. Can't even tell, I started ripping this one out. And I color controlled this one. I started with a little bit of white that I had left over from the square one to make the center. And then you can kind of see how it goes from darker to lighter. And then I cut the teal or the blue and just added the tan border. So they're kind of like a set. They kind of go with, they're all the same color family, but um, they've been perfectly color controlled. Hence all these strings hanging out the back, right? I haven't woven in any of my ends. So that's what I made. I made dishcloths. I wanted to quick come make a video, show them to you and say that I do recommend using the little dollops to make a dishcloth. I definitely loved working with the Karen Cotton Cakes. Why wouldn't I? I love the Karen Cakes. I really love the Sugar Wheel Cotton uh, colorway Sugar Bliss here, but it's just, personally, I did not like it for a dishcloth. Um, I think it has better uses because it is like a nice, really soft, beautiful cotton. I really feel like it should be touching your body, not necessarily scrubbing the floor, the counter, the refrigerator. So I'll take some pictures of these, use them as my thumbnail. Again, if you want to go into the details of the patterns, check out the Canadian Crotcheter. I'll link her video. She also has some really great ideas with what to do with these um, dishcloth patterns um, that I'm actually going to steal from her, but I'm not going to tell y'all. It's for you to go watch with her. But, you know, mainly this was to talk about good cottons for making dishcloth. And then, of course, Lily's Sugar and Cream or the Walmart Peaches and Cream. Those also are nice firm cottons for dishcloths. But I was talking about the, you know, the more unique brands. The r &B Little Dollops, the Sugar Wheels, and the Karen Cakes. Um, I'm very surprised that these were so different because they both are yarn B and they're both listed as cotton yarns. So I was kind of surprised that they were so different, but you know, that happens. So the final thing for those of you who waited to the end of the video, which not many of you do, I know, um, and that's fine. 
I got my knit crate today. Now I'm not gonna make a video about all my knit crates like every week because I'm sure there's there's millions of you, not millions, there's plenty of other YouTubers that make specific videos about their knit crate. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna let that be their content uh, and I'm just gonna sneak it in. Um, and I'm not an ambassador so I don't have a code and I just thought, you know what, this video is about my cotton but I thought, you know what, I'll open my knit crate while I'm here. Oh, and I'm really pretty happy about this. Um, it's called Indigo Glow is their theme for this month. And actually, I'm pretty surprised they have printed patterns here. A little booklet they gave us this time talking about the yarn. And um, it actually has diagrams. So I don't know. If, I think that's knit. So anyway, that is what they have here. And this is the yarn. Um, let's see what it is. It's Yora Yarn by Knit Crate, and this is Speckled sh or Colorway Shibori. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if you can read that. I don't know what that says. Shibori. Uh, Superwash Merino. Um, it is a blue with some nice dark flecks inside. And, oh, look at that. That's pretty. I hope you guys can see it. Maybe I shouldn't do videos outside. Look at how beautiful those flecks of dark blue are. So two skeins of that. And it looks like, looks like shawlette type patterns by um, Jennifer Dickerson and Cassia Brown, Carissa Brown. So those are the, I think this is knit and this is crochet. So that's my knit crate. Let me hold it up here so. You can see some merino fingering wool, some blues, indigo with some dark. And that's all I have for you, my friends. I'll put a link in the description to a knit crate. Um, also, I'll put a link in the description to the Canadian Crotcheter so you can check out her video on dishcloths. I also put a link in the description to the Ravelry uh, link to these patterns. Pull them out, try them. They're really awesome and they worked out well. I started crocheting these. You could hear my kids on there. I started crocheting these on Wednesday because I had a friend at work whose birthday was coming up and my last day of the work week is Thursday. So I started on Wednesday, I made her two and then yesterday after work, Thursday, I made a couple because you can't crochet at work, I work in a daycare folks. And then today, and today is about one, so in that like maybe 50 hours I made one, two, three, four, five and two that I gave to the other gal, so seven cloths. So they really, they work up real quick like. And because they're written all by the same gal, once you understand her pattern and her language and the way she writes things, bam, they just, they just flow right out. So yeah, I really enjoyed them. Um, other than that, that's all I've got for today. Uh, my next, I don't know what my next set of uh, projects will be. I gotta think of something. Got a, ooh, that shawl, that's it. The dabbling hook, some other, I think lacy, a whole bunch of y'all folks were making it. The skipping stones shawl, or shimmering. Now I can't remember which, which is which, but I'm gonna buy that shawl and make it. All right, that's all I've got today, folks. Thanks for watching, and I better hurry this up until the AC kicks in and you can't hear me. <laughs> until then, happy crafting, bye.